If all the electricity went out for an extended period of time, 90% of the population wouldn't survive. If you live in cities or towns, no electricity means no water, no food. You also can't keep what food you have for very long. You would have no heat, and a lot of people who rely on electronics for their health would be out of luck. Within days, society would collapse into chaos. It is said to take just about five days without food and hope of food in these circumstances for people to start becoming cannibals. But before then, if you live in cities and towns, there would be murder, looting, and violence. Everything would be dark at night. It would become extremely dangerous and you'd have no way to call for help, even if there was anyone left to help. The power being knocked out would be catastrophic. But what are the odds of this happening? Sure, solar flares could knock out the power grid, but we have this magnificent magnetic shield that the Earth produces to keep us safe, right? Well, during a pole shift, we might not. Magnetic pole shifts have happened every few hundred thousand years or so. The last one was said to be 750,000 years ago. We're overdue. Geomagnetic excursions are said to happen more frequently every 11 to 12,000 years ago, which would be the Younger Dryas era. Also, we're overdue for these ones as well. A magnetic pole shift is complete reversal of the magnetic poles where the north becomes the south, and it stays like that for hundreds of thousands of years. It is said we are overdue for one of these geomagnetic reversals, but scientists say this could happen most likely in the next few thousand years or so, it's nothing to worry about, really. Except, there are these things called geomagnetic excursions, which is like a mini reversal, where the poles flip, but then within a smaller time frame, flip right back, all within a thousand year period. These seem to happen more frequently, roughly about every 11,000 years or so. And our north and south pole have been moving, and they've been moving a lot, and it keeps speeding up. For most of the 1900s, the physical north pole was moving westwards around 10 centimeters each year towards Canada's Hudson Bay. Then all of a sudden, in 2000, it changed direction, moving 75 degrees eastward. It began moving east at a rate of around 17 centimeters annually. Today is now moving at a pace at 55 kilometers per year. This is creating a real crisis because the entire world GPS system was based upon a fairly stationary location for the North Pole. So the poles are moving and some believe we are in the midst of one of these excursions right now. And the worry is, what does this do to our magnetic field? And what exactly is the reason we have a magnetic field to begin with? The core of the Earth is an electromagnet. Although the crust is solid, the core of the Earth is surrounded by a mixture of molten iron and nickel. The magnetic field of Earth is caused by currents of electricity that flow in, in the molten core. These currents are hundreds of miles wide and flow at thousands of miles per hour as the Earth rotates. The powerful magnetic field passes out through the core of the Earth, passes through the crust, and enters space. The currents flow in the outer core, and the lines of force travel outwards through the rest of the Earth's interior. If the Earth rotated faster, it would have a stronger magnetic field. If it had a larger liquid core, it would also have a stronger magnetic field. Now, would a reversal of the core spin bring about the reversal of the poles? A recent study suggested that there was a strong evidence that Earth's core is now spinning in the opposite direction it was in 2009, when the study suggests the core actually stopped and then began to spin the opposite direction. If we get our magnetic field from the Earth's core spinning inside the Earth, it would seem logical to assume that the poles might shift as well, or that the field itself might become erratic or weaken. There is currently a large hole in our magnetic field over South America and the South Atlantic, and this hole is growing in size. Satellites have to power down when going through this area as they orbit the Earth in order for them to not short out, and astronauts see bright flashes when they traverse this area in orbit. These are cosmic waves bombarding their corneas. The shifting of the poles and the increasing speed of this means the governments and scientists have to adjust the GPS data on their satellites for proper navigation more frequently. 
there's a, been an increase in severe weather. And while this is claimed to be because of climate change caused by man, could there be another reason? The La Chambre's event was a geomagnetic excursion, a short reversal of the Earth's magnetic field. It occurred 41,400 years ago during the end of the last glacial period. During this time, many megafauna went extinct, including our cousins the Neanderthal. This was also when we have uncovered a lot of cave paintings from, including the idea that some of these people covered their skin with red clay to protect themselves from the sun. I find it intriguing that the descriptions of the Atlanteans were said to be of red skin or the depictions of them having red paint on their skin. Possibly a passed down trait of the survivors of this excursion, where the earth was bombarded with radiation from the sun with a weakened magnetic field. And it's possibly why we see so many cave arts. Could the concept of cavemen really be just our few ancestors who had the wits to take refuge in caves during this big pole excursion? Another popular theory that has taken hold is the crust displacement theory. It's become popular due to the uncovering of a book that had been declassified by the CIA. The book is entitled The Adam and Eve Story. The book goes on to describe a catastrophe brought on by, in part, the polar shift. However, it suggests that when the poles flip, the geomagnetic energy from the sun unlocks the Earth's crust, causing the entire mantle to shift as well. And this theory is said to have happened over and over again, the last one being the Younger Dryas period. And the cataclysm this brought and brings when this happens is monumental, and it wipes out a civilization. These events are said to be where the great flood myths of the ancients came from, and possibly the reason Atlantis was destroyed. To those that have never heard of this theory and think it sounds crazy, Albert Einstein did write a foreword for Charles Hapgood's The Earth's Shifting Crust in 1958. So it's not completely out there, except that Hapgood is claimed by supporters of this theory to be a CIA operative who spearheaded this movement in order to bring ridicule on it. If he was, it certainly worked, as this theory would die out and now reside mostly in the pseudo-scientific realm as regarded by the scientific community. While the crust displacement theory sounds good, especially when you listen to its supporters, it really sounds like there might be something there to it, except that really becomes inconsistent by these proponents of them. On one hand, you have a pole shift, and they say there's a new north and south pole, that the poles shift 180 degrees, and the Earth's crust shifts the same. But then the poles snap right back, so it seems strange that the shift in energy from the sun on one shift would make the crust shift 180 degrees, but when the poles flip back, it doesn't do the same thing to the crust anymore. Sometimes it seems like they say one or the other snaps back, but at different times, suggesting the new poles will be in their new position and also Antarctica will be on the new equator. It, it all seems very inconsistent, unless I think it loses whatever credibility that it might have. In 1948, Hugh Brown, an electrical engineer, advanced the hypothesis of catastrophic pole shift. Brown also argued that the accumulation of ice at the poles caused reoccurring tipping of the axis, identifying cycles of the approximately seven millennia. This is the theory that Einstein commented on. He didn't scoff at this concept, just as I don't. I do think the axis of the Earth can and will tilt at some point, and it will drastically change what happens on the face of the planet. But Einstein didn't agree that the ice itself would be enough to unlock the crust. When looking at these pole shifts, it's difficult to assess because the crust displacement people are not the only ones being inconsistent. And I find a big problem with science in modern times, because it's become an attribute for the community to proclaim consensus as fact. While researching this topic, I would find articles that have scientists claiming that only the major pole shifts happen and there hasn't been any in 700,000 years. Then the evidence appeared to have come out of it happening 40,000 years ago, and at other times. So then they call these excursions rather than reversals. The poles don't say flipped for as long. Then they also say that there's no correlation to mass extinctions or climate. And yet there clearly is. A lot of the time with modern science is that the disciplines have become so narrowly focused that they don't cross pollinate with anyone else. This happens even within a discipline where other scientists don't talk to each other or work together. New evidence is presented and is disregarded and ridiculed until it's backed up by more and more scientists finding similar evidence. Rather than embracing new ideas and going out to try and test and prove whether these new ideas are correct, science has moved to a stance of assumptions of fact. And in dealing with the past, especially on Earth, 
it is quite honestly just hubris to assume we know everything about it when we know in reality so very little about it. It is extremely data centric and we have such little data about it that new data can almost always break previous conceptions of the past. As for the pole shifting, it seems clear that we are in the process of a shifting. Whether just an excursion or a full on flip doesn't really matter. For the real and major issue we will face in this is if the magnetic field does weaken enough to take out our electrical grid, then we need to take that idea seriously because massive waves and floods or not, without electricity, our civilization is over. So what do you think? Are we doomed? Will the magnetic field weaken and destroy our society? Or will it just be a slow moving shift and nothing really will change for us? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.